What in dog's name do submarines have to do with World War I fighter planes? Hi, I'm Donovan Bixley and these are some of the true tales behind my Flying Furballs books. Every Flying Furball story starts with a drawing, which inspires me to think up a crazy new adventure. For Flying Furballs Book 6, Double Cross, I created this image of a dogfight around Big Ben Clock Tower in London. But then, I had a really big problem. A World War I fighter plane didn't have enough fuel to fly across the English Channel and back again. 100 years ago, the German military were thinking just the same thing. German engineers at their submarine base in Zeebrugge came up with a solution. They decided to put a float plane on the deck of a submarine. On the 15th of January 1915, German submarine U-12 set off from Zeebrugge harbour with a float plane on board. The plan was to motor across the English Channel and up the River Thames towards London. The float plane was supposed to take off, attack the city before landing near the submarine and being taken back to Zeebrugge. This event was the inspiration for an exciting dogfight over London in Flying Verbal 6 Double Cross. The idea of fighter planes buzzing low around London's famous landmarks during World War I may seem a little bit fanciful, but this scene is inspired by a real New Zealand pilot. Malcolm McGregor was one of New Zealand's top fighter aces in World War I, known as Mad Mac to his friends. After crashing his fighter plane in France, Mac was sent back to England to recover from his injuries. Afterward, he stayed on in England training new pilots. But teaching was super boring for someone like Mac. He wanted to get back to the excitement and danger of dogfighting over France. Because there was a desperate need for pilot trainers, Mac discovered that he could get into all sorts of mischief, but never get into trouble. Mac was particularly famous for doing spins and loops straight from takeoff. He buzzed low over double-decker buses, around bridges, and one time he flew through London, zooming up the River Thames so low that his wheels touched the water. He even buzzed the Royal Castle at Windsor, where a policeman on the ground took out his notebook and tried to get the plane's serial number. As for those U-boats, in reality, the German submarine aircraft carrier was a failure because the submarine couldn't go underwater and the aircraft was buffeted by rough seas. Eventually, the plan was abandoned after several trials. The type of submarine which features in flying furballs has an airtight aircraft hangar on the front of the conning tower. This was a real submarine, but it wasn't developed until 10 years after World War I. Soon navies all over the world gave up on submarine aircraft carriers. The whole idea was just barking bonkers. Join me next time for more unbelievable true tales behind the Flying Furballs books. Get your paws on all the hair-raising Flying Furballs adventures. 